Well, I've, had, I've uh, introduced myself uh, earlier this morning. Uh, I'm uh, Vera Muitin Dalmaida, and uh, I'm from the Austrian Academy of Science. And uh, we're working uh, together with, uh, well, I'm working together with uh, Stefan Sperlitz, and he will introduce himself. Well, hi, um, I'm a computer scientist. My name is Stefan Spielitz, and I'm trying to support archaeologists with uh, methodology around uh, geometry. So we try to find out some techniques to support the archaeological department in that regard. Okay. And our project is in cooperation with the Technical University of Vienna. Uh, well, we'll uh, we will be presenting now uh, our project, and uh, the project's acronym is ODIG. Uh, it's an online database uh, for research on the development of vessel shapes and dimensions. More specifically, we're working uh, within a specific chronology between the 10th and 4th, uh, 4th century BC, and uh, more specifically even, uh, with red-black figured, white ground, geometric, attic and Cypriot vessels. Uh, this project is um, a sub-project, let's say, of the Corpus Vasorum Antiquorum. It's a very, well, I think it's uh, the um, oldest uh, project from uh, the Union Académie uh, de l'Académie Internationale. Uh, it has uh, around 100 years, this project, so uh, we're now digitizing and, uh, well, trying to go further. Uh, we have several uh, problems and questions related with these uh, Greek vessels. Well, I'm now generalizing uh, with these uh, ancient uh, Greek vessels. And, uh, well, this is just a short list of some of our archaeological problems and questions. Uh, so we've decided, for a question of time, resources, etc., to focus at this first step on uh, 3D uh, scanning or digitizing, actually, uh, these vessels uh, using either laser scanning, um, structured light scanning, photogrammetry, but also CT scanning, and in some occasions, X-ray uh, also. Uh, so we've digitized uh, more than 400 vessels up to now. When I say v uh, we, it's not just the Austrian Academy. So we have been working for uh, uh, several years uh, with, uh, for instance, um, a Heidelberg University, but also with uh, the Technical University in Vienna and uh, uh, the corresponding teams. Uh, so, as I said before, we're focusing on shapes and filling volumes uh, now at this uh, present moment, and uh, we're trying to uh, develop some uh, semi or um, hopefully auto automatic measurements of vessels, visualization of profiles and sections, and uh, some reconstruction issues. Uh, this is a very generic overview. Uh, we will be talking about the acquisition and post-processing uh, because we have been talking about that uh, for the whole morning and part of the afternoon. I will sort of skip this part, okay? And if you have uh, questions, I will uh, be glad to answer to them later. And because uh, this project uh, is also focused on this online database, I will um, well, I'll talk a little bit about that. And then Stefan will talk later about uh, metrology, ge uh, geometry and reconstruction, and also how to uh, create automatic profile and cross sections. So about the acquisition, we always start with questions and problems. And then depending on these, we start planning and collect the corresponding data that suits us best to analyze and be able to interpret. Um, so the generic pipeline, we, uh, according to our problems and questions uh, and the type of data that we need to collect, we uh, choose the 3D data system uh, and uh, there are several issues related to workspace, data acquisition, post-processing and finally uh, acquiring the 3D model. Of course, there are issues related to errors and uncertainty that we have already um, listened to this morning. Um, about the digital documentation, so I to uh, told you that um, uh, we have been focused on the 3D data. Nevertheless, there are lots of digital documentation and non also non-digital uh, that we have to um, take into account about the object. So provenance issues um, and uh, well, date, type, chronologies, uh, etc. And we're using controlled vocabularies to describe these same objects. 
uh, jail names, uh, chronontology, and ISO standards. Uh, for the digital assets, uh, we're also uh, documenting all the metadata and corresponding paradata. Uh, so, uh, well, because of the reproducibility and the repeatability issues, but many more other issues. And uh, finally, um, with these uh, digital data, uh, we want to, of course, acquire several types of measurements. And um, but we'll talk about that later. So we've got the raw data, uh, raw data, so the 3D model with holes and so the typical thing. Uh, then in some kind, um, we have different purposes for these 3D models. Uh, so in the database, we make available the raw data, but in some occasions, uh, occasions we also make available just clean. So we, we clean the flies that are flying around and the tables and we don't need this kind of stuff and nothing else. We don't touch the rest of the model. But in other case, we also provide, besides these, um, closed, so hypothetical uh, versions of these 3D models. And also we provide high resolution uh, model and low resolution because people have different needs. But because we uh, provide the raw data, if anyone else wants to follow another pipeline for their own purposes, they, they are free to do that. Um, Photographs are also taken, as I told you before, x-ray images of uh, some, uh, some of the vases were also taken. And uh, then, uh, Stefan will talk more about this, uh, we provide also uh, vect automatic vector graphics from the 3D models, and uh, there's also some manual uh, illustrations provided, well, semi, uh, with the help of the 3D. And this, these are just uh, two images of, uh, well, two uh, layout templates of our um, online database. Uh, it's just, these are just templates, that's why the images are repeated, uh, with uh, several uh, 3D models and all images uh, accompanying uh, the objects. And then, um, well, uh, information about the object and that can be downloaded as a CSV and uh, other format files. Uh, so now, Stefan. Okay. Thank you, Vera. So, since we're very short on time, I will just skip um, most of the parts here, and we can talk about that in detail afterwards, if you want. Um, first, I start with the metrology part. So, what do we want to measure of those 3D scans? Simple things like dimensions, width, height, and so on. Uh, the thickness, the wall thickness of the vessels, or the volume, the filling volume, for example, to compare uh, different vessels and see if they have a common filling volume, if there was a common standard in ancient times. Um, we will concentrate first on thickness. Uh, so basically if you ask archaeologists where they want to uh, measure thickness on the vessel, uh, they, you will get different answers on de depending on who you ask. Um, they will tell you they want to measure thickness on different uh, positions of the vessel, so therefore we will provide uh, archaeologists with the possibility to select a region of interest where they want to measure thickness. Um, the next problem would be how do you measure thickness with a 3D model? If you are asking different people, we will get different answers. Um, and two main approaches are uh, very simple. The first one is the ray method, which just casts uh, array along the negative normal direction of the surface and um, the intersection point basically gives them the, the thickness. So if you cast the ray from point P1 up here, then you have the thickness T1 up here. Another possibility would be to define it by um, first calculating the so-called medial axis, which is depicted here in blue, and then the thickness at point P2 would be uh, the distance to the medial axis, the shortest distance, times 2. So you get for the point P2 the thickness T2, uh, which means that if you go to the corner, the thickness goes to 0. Um, there are also variations with the medial axis. For example, you can approximate the medial axis such that this fork here disappears, and therefore you get the different thickness uh, values. We provide the archaeologists with different metrics, and they can choose what they need in their concrete uh, use cases. Um, volume is a different topic, so if you have an incomplete 3D scan, 
with an unknown interior here because you cannot really scan or typically with a laser scan or structured light scanner you cannot really scan the whole interior of the vessel because the opening is typically too small. Uh, so you have a known interior in, depicted in red and an unknown depicted in blue. Uh, but what you know is um, the weight of the vessel and you have an estimate of the material density. So you know how dense the, the used material is in, in the vessel. So you know the material volume depicted in grey. Uh, you want to measure the filling volume up to a specific level. How can you do that? You just split up the, the vessel, close the parts, uh, the upper part and the lower part, calculate the volumes, the upper volume and the lower volume, and basically the filling volume would be then uh, both volumes, the upper and the lower, uh, added together and the material volume, which you calculated beforehand, you just sub subtract and you get the filling volume. Um, that works well, but not in every case, because the, the filling plane up to which you want to measure needs to be, um, so everything above the filling plane of the geometry needs to be known. If that's not known, then you get ambiguous results because you don't know how much material is on the upper half and how much on the lower half, and therefore you don't know how much filling volume you have. How to um, overcome those limitations? Well, we developed a method such that we can restore the missing inner geometry with some parameters, and I'm going to talk about that quickly now. So basically what our algorithm does is it takes an incomplete scan, and the parameters, the weight of the vessel and uh, the estimate of the material density, and tries to complement the missing geometry on the inside. <clears throat> we have some goals. Uh, so the, the parts which are already scanned on the inside should stay there. They shouldn't get lost. And you also don't want to have solid parts hollowed out. So you want to control where you have cavities and where not. So using the weight and the material density and uh, the incomplete scan as an input to the algorithm, you can basically, if you have the incomplete scan, you can basically split it up in two parts, the inner part, the outer part, and optionally you can modify the outer part such that you can control, you remove all the solid parts to control where the cavities are. So the algorithm then basically takes the outer shell, creates an offset surface to the inside, then combine, combines it with the known inner parts which have been already scanned. Then you can connect this inside uh, mesh with the outside mesh and can measure an actual volume. And then you want to optimize this volume until you reach the volume you have been given by the weight and the material density. You know? And basically what the algorithm does is it optimizes the inner surface until the desired target volume is reached. And as soon as you reached this desired target volume, you finished, you have a complete manifold object and you can do whatever you want with that. For example, calculate the filling volume. Um, that's a quick ground truth comparison between, thank you, between a, a CT scan and the reconstruction. Uh, it's basically off by a factor of 5%, and that's mainly because in the original object there are some air bubbles in the material, and those air bubbles actually contribute in the reconstruction to the filling volume. Yeah? So you can imagine that those air bubbles are part of the filling volume, and therefore in the reconstruction the, the filling volume is a bit larger. Um, now I want to talk about visualization techniques. Um, basically, what we want to have is from the 3D scans, we want to create such um, graphics. The, those are typically vector graphics and they should be true to scale. Um, how, how can you create such graphics from a 3D model? You have to uh, search for the right viewpoint, how to look <coughs> at the vessel to create those, those perspectives. And those are typically uh, orthogonally to the rotational axis of the vessel and they're orthogonally to specific features, in that case orthogonally to the, to the handle. So 
what we do is first we search for symmetric features of the 3D vessel and in that case we have two symmetry planes one goes through the spout and one goes through the handle and then we take the symmetry plane look orthogon orthogonally to the symmetry plane to create the contour we cut the object to create the inside geometry and then we can also add additional details that's basically work in progress but there are some papers about that how to do that and this result we basically give to an illustrator and the illustrator takes it as an input and creates a nice illustration from it. So, he, and the illustrator also works with pho uh, photographs of the vessel and both in combination are then used to create these illustrations. And the approach works quite well for simple vessels which are actually symmetric. So overall we talked about measurements of vessels we talked about illustration processes and how to reconstruct the missing interior if we don't have it. And we talked, Vera talked about what we plan to do with our collection of data and how we want to make it accessible to the public in the future. Thank you.